All right, Revelation chapter 12 today, Revelation chapter 12, and we're going to get into some stuff today that, wow, is just, it's like Gail Ripplinger says, in awe of thy word. I'm in awe of God's word, and I'm just almost shaking and trembling right now because what I have to present to you is just amazing, just utterly amazing, and how anybody could learn what we're going to learn today and still not believe in God or the Bible is just unfathomable to me. I just, I don't understand. And the more you get in this book, the more you want to get in this book. This Bible is amazing. Now, I've given you seven handouts today. We're going to go through these handouts as well. But um, today we're going to look at something that makes the book of Revelation really come to life. As it points to us being in the last days. And boy, when we get to this, you're going to go, wow. And it's just going to make the Bible come alive, and you're just going to be like, I want to read it even more. Amen? If you're saved, the Holy Spirit in you should resonate with that. Amen. But if you're not saved, you just look at this and go, well, that's just a coincidence. Well, there comes a time when how many coincidences are you going to allow for? <laughs> if it's just one or two or three coincidences, but when it's like 50 or 60 coincidences, you have to say, nope, that's God. <laughs> so it has to be God. So we're going to look at some things today that are amazing. Now remember that I said that the book of Revelation is mostly future. I say mostly future because some of the things are past, right? Revelation chapter 2 and 3 was the seven literal churches in the time of John. And where were those churches again? Turkey. What happened? Was it last week or the week before? There was a giant earthquake in where? And how many died? Something like 30,000 or something? And so it's, it's interesting. The Bible is always about over there. Not over here. We think the center of the world is America, but it's not. It's, it's over there in, the, in, the, um, in Asia and in the Middle East. And so we see some past. Then we see chapter 4, we see the rapture. Then we start seeing more and more in the book that is all future, but then we see something in Revelation 7 that reminds us again of something in the past. And what was it? Well, it's the first fruits, the 144,000. Remember we looked at that and how, wow, that kind of sounds like the babies in the time of Jesus. And they're called the first fruits. So that goes back and reminds us of, of something past, Jesus. So as he's going through and he's retelling stuff, he can sometimes go back and talk about things that are past. Remember the book of Revelation is four tellings of the same thing. And what is it telling us over? Four times. Just like there's four accounts in the Gospels of the same thing. Revelation is four accounts of the same thing. And it's church, rapture, tribulation, Armageddon, and millennium. And it's retelling that over and over and over. And uh, 144,000, that could have been passed, but then again, they could be back in the future. We talked about that as well. But Revelation 7 is kind of a parenthetical, remember? It's kind of like out of place. It's like added information. What we're going to see today in Revelation chapter 12, the first two verses at least, it's almost like added information. And it almost looks like it's before the rapture. And it almost looks like it's already happened. <laughs> So the book of Revelation is unfolding before our very eyes. And that shows me we must very much be in the last days. Now, has the rapture taken place yet? No. Some people are teaching that we're in the book of Revelation now in the sense that we're in the tribulation. I don't think so. I don't believe that yet. But I do believe as we get into Revelation chapter 12 that God could show something just a little bit before the rapture that is in the book of Revelation that is kind of like a, hey, get ready because you're about to be raptured out of here. And I think that's what we're about to see in Revelation chapter 12. So, with this stated, we get something very strange with chapter 12. Could it be another one of those little parenthetical things where he kind of goes back a little bit before the rapture and says something? Like he did a little bit, talks about a little before with the 144,000. It sounds like it. In the first and second verses of Revelation chapter 12 are mind-boggling. Many claim that these two verses took place six years ago. And I'm going to get into all this and tell you about this in what they call the Revelation 12 sign, which I think was discovered by Scotty Clark. And I got to speak to him and meet him one day, and I got to meet him. Really neat guy. Um, it's called a sign. It's actually called a wonder, but a wonder is a sign. And by the way, this isn't the only sign in the Bible that's something up in the heavens. We see it again in chapter 12. So we see two signs in Revelation 12. And then in chapter 15, we see a sign. And John is writing, says, I'm looking up in heaven and I see a sign. Well, what's up in heaven? Stars, constellations. 
So wouldn't it stand to reason that it probably has something to do with those? Well, yeah, I think so. So there's a sign or a wonder in heaven. So where do we begin? Well, some people look at this chapter and they look at the book of Revelation and they say, I don't understand it. That's like we've, why we've talked about some pastors don't even want to talk about it because they don't understand it. And they look at it and say, it's all allegorical. It's all figurative. It doesn't mean anything because it's about some woman giving birth in heaven. Or it's, it's all an allegory. I try to take the book of Revelation as literal as possible. So how do we take this as literal as possible? We just believe what it says and just literally go, okay, so we look up and we see literally something up there, right? So that's got to be what it's talking about. And so um, there's so much to get into. I don't even know where to begin. Let's just go ahead and read all of chapter 12. It's verse 1 through 17. Then we'll be familiar with what we're about to study, and then we'll get into it, okay? Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A wonder is a sign. So there's a great sign appearing in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. So there's two signs. There's the Revelation 12 sign A, and I guess this is Revelation 12 sign B. And it appears to be way later than what takes place in verse 1 and 2. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now who would this be? Well, in type, it's Satan, right? But you know, there's a constellation in the heavens called Draco, which means dragon. So does this correspond with something up? Isn't that weird? And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Now we know this is Jesus because he's going to rule in the millennium. But if she is Israel, like many people believe, Israel gave birth to the Messiah, Jesus. And so Jesus is going to, so is this past reminding us of Jesus again? I have to say this, John always points to Jesus. And, I'm getting goosebumps, John seems like he was always trying to reach the Jews. Somebody sent me an email this week that says, Brother Breaker, you, you didn't tell anybody this, that the book of Revelation is only to the Jews. And I thought about that, I'm like, no, it's not only to the Jews. And some of it talks about the church, that's us. Right? Revelation 1, 5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, that's us. But they're half right. There's a lot in that book for the Jews. And they should be reading it. Jews should accept the New Testament and should be reading this. Because if they did, wow. <laughs> they would be buckling up and getting ready for Jesus to come. But look what it says in verse 6. Um, did I read all of verse 5? It says, A rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to His throne. Some people think this is the rapture. But if this is Jesus, when was Jesus caught up to the throne? When He was raised from the dead. And some with him. So that takes us back there. Well, the rapture is a resurrection. Did you know that? Harvest. First fruits, harvest, gleaning. So somebody's going to be caught up to heaven at the rapture. So it kind of looks like it's talking about both events, past and future, doesn't it? And the woman fled into the wilderness. This would be Israel. And I believe this is in the tribulation now, starting in this verse, where she hath a place prepared of God, and they would feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Remember, three and a half years, 42 months, and a thousand two hundred and sixty days. Now, three score, we know what a score is, it's 20. So, three score would be 20 times or 60. So, the Bible is a very specific book. If you take it literally, you understand, oh, there's a seven year tribulation because the first three and a half they're worshiping what we saw last week, and the last three and a half they're fleeing into the wilderness. So, it continues here, and it says, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Where? In heaven. This is just figurative, people say. Well, wait till we get into the rest of this. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So thank God for that. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So I guess he's the head of fake news, right? And it says, He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There's fallen angels in the Bible way back when, huh? Well, they fell willingly. Here, God makes them leave. I think that's amazing. So much that happens in, in the beginning 
happens in the end. It's, it's, we'll get into that more too as well. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So now it looks like we're getting into here comes Jesus at Armageddon to rule. That's what it sounds like. Verse 11, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Wow, so the blood of Jesus, that's important. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And then interesting, the last three and a half years is when God pours his wrath out. But Satan pours out his wrath too. God from heaven, Satan from below. That's, there's so many types in the Bible, but there's so many anti-types as well. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. <coughs> Who is the woman? Israel. No. No one's ever persecuted Jews, have they? Well, if they did, who were they of? So was Hitler a great Christian? Or could Hitler have been uh, part of the occult and worshiping Satan? Yeah, you ever hear of the SS? The SS were very much into the occult, and Hitler was very much. So I think Hitler was used by Satan to kill the Jews in the Holocaust. And it persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Guess what? He's not done. He's going to be persecuting the Jews again. And we're actually starting to see some of that today. Most of the world is against Israel. Did you know that? And they don't want Israel to even be over there in that land again. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. I love that. Does God promise the Jews and the nation of Israel that land? So it's just funny in the Bible when you're reading about the Jews and being in the land, God's like, her place. Yeah. She deserves to be there because I told her that's her land. Ooh, you say that today in the UN and they hate you, don't they? Because she'd been gone for 2,000 years, but now she's back. Israel's is a nation again. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time times and a half of time from the face of the serpent. Well, if a time is a year, a time would be one times at least two, that makes three, and a half of times would be three, I don't know how you do three and a half, I guess, a half, three, that would be three and a half years. So here we see the last three and a half years, what happens to make the Jews have to flee Jerusalem? Well, what happens is the Antichrist comes in and sits in the temple and says, I am God. So he takes over Jerusalem, kicks the Jews out, and they have to have a temple to be worshiping in, don't they? We saw that last week. So, and it says here in verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Now, do you remember last week? Do you all remember last week? Who shows up in the first three and a half years? The two witnesses. And one of them shuts up heaven that it rains not. You talk about a drought, three and a half years of no rain. So this must be taking place toward the end when all of a sudden it gets to rain again. And somehow the devil tries to use the rain and collects it and tries to flood out the Jews with this great flood. Who else had a flood? God did. He destroyed the earth with a flood, Noah, to save Noah's people. The devil, anti-type, he wants to use the flood to destroy people. Isn't the Bible fun to read, to see all this stuff? It's more than ironic. It's it's. Poetic justice, amen. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Could this be happening in the earthquake, perhaps? Maybe the earthquake had a twofold reason for happening. I don't know. But I would think an earthquake would cause cracks for water to go in or something like that. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Keeping commandments works. Testimony. Sounds like faith plus work. Sounds like the tribulation gospel, doesn't it? So here is Revelation chapter 12. Now you just read through your Bible and you just go, huh, that's interesting. But what does it mean? Well, that's where we're going to open up a can of worms, amen, and look yeah, into this. That yeah, that was this week's sermon, uh, opening up a can of worms, amen. So where do we begin with all this? Well, let's go back to verse 1 and 2 and start in verse 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Where is this taking place? Where does he see this sign? In heaven. So he's looking up and he sees something up above. What do you think he sees up above? Well, when you look up at nighttime, what do you see? You see stars. 
So literally, could this be stars or constellations that he sees? Does the Bible teach about stars and planets being four signs? In a minute, I'm going to show you something, and I'll just go ahead and turn it over real quick because we're going to look at something that took place on a specific day in history that looks exactly like what we just read. And that was September 23rd, 2017. And we're going to look at that here in a minute, but let's back up a second and let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And while you're turning over there to Genesis chapter 1, there was a guy, and I believe that God made the stars, okay? I believe God put them up there for a reason. And there's a guy named E.W. Bullinger who wrote a book called The Witness of the Stars. There are 12 main constellations in heaven. And each one of those 12 has, I don't remember how many other constellations with them. So 12, what, what does 12 remind you of? The 12 tribes of Israel or the 12 apostles. This guy wrote a book called The Witness of the Stars. And you know they have named all of the constellations and they all have shapes. So they take the stars and they say, well, that kind of looks like a lion. Let's call it Leo, lion. And he goes through and he goes through a cycle and he shows that it's like it's telling the gospel over and over in the stars. Now, do you think that's just coincidence? Okay, well, let's just chalk that up for a coincidence for a minute, okay? But let's come back to it. I think it's God. What does the Bible say? Oh, I forget how to say the verse correctly. The, the heavens declare His, how does that verse go? His handiwork. If you begin to study the stars, now I forgot to say this. There's the right way to study the stars and the wrong way. The right way is astronomy. Astronomy is just looking at them. The wrong way is astrology. Astrology is using the stars to try to tell the future for your own profit or for your own benefit. But to look at them and say, wow, God made that, and maybe God did that for a reason, is not wrong. In fact, that's what we're encouraged to do in the Bible. So Genesis, let me show you this. Genesis chapter 1, and look at what God said. Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. Genesis 1, 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs. Huh. And for seasons, oh, Paul says what? The time is in the seasons, you mean not that I write unto you? Seasons and for days and for years. They literally can mark a day and a year. Isn't that amazing? So according to the Bible, God gave the stars for signs. Wow, that's interesting. Now let's go to Job chapter 38. Does the Bible mention any of the stars or, or constellations? And by the way, let me say this in 1 Corinthians 1.22, who needs a sign? The Jews seek after a sign. So signs in the Bible are for the Jews. Paul said we don't need signs. He said we're supposed to believe by faith, not by sight. But the Jews can't do that. The Jews have to have a sign. Moses shows up with two signs. So if this sign is something that took place that I'm about to show you, who was it for? For the Jews. But here we are looking at it. And if we know our Bible that God's going back to deal with the Jews, then what does that mean for us who are saved? We're about to exit. Amen. Woo, are you getting goosebumps? Man, I'm getting goosebumps so big a pig could suck on it. Well, not anymore. Amen. We, we uh, butchered a pig yesterday. Well, that was a lot of fun. So uh, Job chapter 38, look at verse 31 and 32. I'm just going to show you some verses in the Bible about the heavens and how God has put these up there for a reason. Job 38, 31. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Those are constellations. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Arcturus is a constellation. Maseroth is the constellations. And the Jews, the, the, the Jews would always make sure they look up there. Matter of fact, some of their feasts, they can't know what feast it is until the moon is in a certain position. So Jews have always been taught to look up to heaven. Have you ever seen Jewish synagogues? I don't know about the modern ones, but I like to follow um, archaeology. And, and they found some from 100 years after Jesus, 200 years after Jesus. Even before Jesus, they found old Jewish synagogues. And those synagogues had constellations drawn either on the floor or on the wall. Because the Jews use the skies as signs. 
It's like God's communicating to them through that on when they're supposed to do their feast and things like that. So here's an example of this. So isn't that interesting? So let's go to Job chapter 9. I believe that God made the heavens. And I believe that God knew what was going to happen before it happens, and He would mark it in the heavens. Matter of fact, let me give you an example. Do you know the star of Bethlehem? When Jesus was born, two years before at least, there was a star in heaven. And here come some wise men, and they say, where is he born king of the who? Jews. <laughs> Even the lost crowd that were Gentiles were like, yeah, all well, that's for the Jews. So where's that king of the Jews? I'm getting goosebumps. Are you getting goosebumps? This is, wow, this is amazing, isn't it? Now, you talk like this, people say, oh, you're believing in astrology. No, remember, I'm not using it for wicked. I'm just going to the Bible, and God did that. Amen. To me, that doesn't reek of evil or wickedness. That shows me intelligent design and a true God that knew what was going to happen before it happened. And before the creation of everything, he put the stars up there. And when it happens, everybody goes, how did he know? Because he's God. Amen. Woo. Are you getting goosebumps too? Let me know now. All right. Uh, Job chapter 9, verse uh, 8. Speaking about God, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. You know, there's uh, water up there. There's a sea of glass we've seen in the book of Revelation. And what do they call a guy who's an astronaut? Not. That's a nautical term for sailor or water. Astronaut. Verse 9, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Okay, well this is a wonder we're going to look at here a minute in the book of Revelation. Go to Isaiah chapter 40. We got a lot to get into today, and if we go a little long, I think it'll be worth it. There's a lot to get into. And you know, this is just scraping the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> this is why you need to study your Bible, amen, because there is so much in this book that we're still missing. I, I remember what Paul said. He said, we see through a glass darkly. We can't see the whole picture, but boy, what we can see makes me want to see the whole picture, makes me want the rapture to come because my God is so smart. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 25 and 26 to whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? That's God. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. The host of heaven, that's, that's what, the stars. He says, lift up your eyes. God tells you to look at the stars. I wonder why. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. So God created them, he gave them names. Now let's go over to Psalms chapter 19. So do you think that maybe we should study the constellations and see what they are? Do you think maybe they're there for a reason? Psalms chapter 19 and verse 1 through 6. Yeah, here's the verse I was trying to quote earlier. Psalms 19, 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Wow. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Wait a minute. Uttereth speech, showeth knowledge. What's the context of that? The heavens. So it sounds like the Bible's saying that the heavens speak to us. <laughs> Is that how? <laughs> through the constellation. So God speaks to us through the Bible, but He speaks to somebody, and I think it's the Jews. I want to be very careful. I don't want to get too into that whole star thing. But looking at it from this perspective, hey, that's for the Jews. He's trying to show them something. And we're going to see how God talks to the Jews through the planets and the moons and all the cycles. It's outrageous. It's, it's amazing. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the earth. He's talking about the constellations and the stars. And their words to the end of the world. Their words. It's like they're speaking. The stars are speaking. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. <laughs> Jesus is the morning star. Oh, I got ahead of myself. We'll get to that here in a minute. But he's coming for a bride soon, isn't he? Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Well, one day Jesus is coming back to Armageddon. that's on the other side of the board. And uh, fire is coming out of his mouth. There's going to be great heat and all the enemies destroyed. So... The voice of the heavens. Could it be saying that the stars preach something? Do the stars speak and say something? Let's go to Revelation 12 again. 
verse 1 and 2. And here's what it says. With that in mind, what if verse 1 and 2 is a constellation? And if it is, which? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman. Is there a constellation that's a woman? Well, there's one called Virgo. And you want to look at your handout right here, the first handout. We're going to look at this, and I'm going to draw it up here as well. And there appeared a wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Now, has there ever been a time in history when that was seen in a constellation taking place? The answer is yes, once, only once in 7,000 years. And it occurred on a specific date. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? On September 23rd, 2017. September 23rd, 2017. Now, I did a video about that. It got like 9 million views or something. I was just like, wow. And a lot of Christians said, oh, the breaker, he's in astrology now. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, I don't care what you say. It's in the Bible. And I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, what is this? And you know what my first thought was? It's got to be something for the Jews. And let me tell you a bit here in a minute, it was. But September 23rd, 2017, Virgo, the constellation, had something weird happen. Jupiter went into what looks like her womb, right? She's supposed to be pictured as a woman. And it turned around. And it went back around and it came out nine months. Jupiter was in that constellation. It looked like a woman in travail. Isn't that weird? But just coincidence, right? No, let's take the Bible as literal as possible. And then up above her is a thing called Leo. Well, the only time that the moon was at her feet and the sun was at her head was on September 23rd, 2017. And there were 12 stars above her. Well, the constellation Leo only has nine stars. But you know what else happened? This is creepy and crazy and just either it's the biggest cosmic accident that ever happened or this is God marking a specific time in history and saying, now watch for this, because I'm about to do something. It just so happened that three planets were right here. One, two, three. One of those planets was Venus. One of those planets was Mars. And one of those planets was Mercury. And guess what that made? There's 10, 11, and 12. 12 stars. You got goosebumps yet? <laughs> but you see, when you preach on this, people go, oh, no, that's not real. That's not real. People must not want to study. This is why pastors don't want to preach on Revelation because they're like, well, I don't understand it. I do. I look at this and I go, that must be God. That must be God, right? That must be God showing you. So here's a better picture of it that I gave you in the handout. And you can see what it looks like. And it just so happens that the only time in history in 7,000 years, and the way you can look this up, you go to Stellarium. And there's been people that have gone like 7,000 years back. and forth. This never happens from our perspective. By the way, it's from Jerusalem looking up <laughs> that you see this the best. This never happened in 7,000 years of human history. So is God telling him to write this down? Because signs are for what? Days? And there's a specific day that God wanted us to look at? All throughout history, people used to look at the stars. And eclipses meant, oh, something bad might be coming. And things like that. So they knew that God would use the stars. Now, like I said, I don't want to get too much into it. But isn't this amazing that this alignment has only happened once in history? And it was on September 23rd, 2017. Now, remember that signs are for the Jews. 1 Corinthians 1.22. So did this sign mean anything? I went back and watched my video September 23rd, 2017, and then I did another video entitled uh, Revelation 12 Sign. That's what it was. Revelation 12 Sign Revisited. And I watched those over, and I, I remember I, I said, whatever this is, it's for the Jews. Guess what? I was right. <laughs> it's good to be right. No. But the only reason I'm right is because the Bible's right. Amen? So, September 23rd, 2017, the majority of so-called Christians said, nothing happened. Are they blind? There was a guy named Trump who was president. Do you know what happened on December 6, 2017? Two months after, President Trump stood up and said, the capital of Israel is Jerusalem, no longer Tel Aviv. You got goosebumps yet? I do. That's like the biggest thing in history for the Jews in 2,000 years. 
They got their land back, but they didn't have their capital. And then this guy says, no, that's your capital. And that just so happens to take place two months after that. Are you telling me that means nothing? Or is that God in heaven trying to give a sign to the Jews and saying, hey, guys, about to kick this thing off again for you guys going back to dealing with you. Remember Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, where he says, After two days and the third day I will deal with you. Well, if a day is a thousand years, a thousand years one day, like it says in 2 Peter 3, 8, then after 2,000 years, God goes back to dealing with the Jews. It's all working out, just like the Bible said. So let's look at our second of our handout here. This is handout number two. The Revelation 12, 1 through 2 sign happened on September 23rd, 2017. I believe that is what that was. And signs are for the Jews. Thus, a question must be asked, did anything... Big happen around that time for the Jewish nation. Remember, in Revelation 12, it says a great wonder. <laughs> That's great that he declared. Now, the next president comes back and says, oh, I don't like that. He tried to change it, didn't he? But it still happened. It still happened. December 6, 2017, President Donald J. Trump declared Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel instead of Tel Aviv. Now, you want to see some more coincidences? People go, it's just a coincidence. The Bible's not true. Okay. There's got to come a time when you finally need to get on your knees and admit that it's true and Jesus is God. Okay? Because we're going to keep looking at things that you want to call coincidences that are not. Donald J. Trump moved the capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, because of all that Trump has done for Israel, all that Trump has done for Israel, do you know Israel loves Trump? The Jews minted a coin in which they compare Trump to the ancient King Cyrus. And here is that coin. It's King Cyrus here and Trump here. And they're calling Trump the new Cyrus. Why is this important? Because it was, oh man, stop these goosebumps, man. It, because King Cyrus was the one who gave the decree to the Jews to rebuild their temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 and 23. Could God be telling us that shortly the Jews will rebuild their temple within the next couple of years? And is God giving them the go-ahead? Could Trump be the dude that God used? Because God used Cyrus. Could God be using him as well? Just coincidence, nothing to see here. Right. Now, was September 23rd, 2017 the rapture? No. We were hoping it would be because a, a child caught up to heaven. You know, we thought maybe that's the church and all that. But then you got to remember, oh, but signs are for the Jews. So the God is telling the Jews something. What was it for? It was for the Jews. Could this be a warning to them, letting them know that the tribulation or the final week of Daniel is very near? Could that be what it is? Let's go to handout number three. Okay. Handout number three. Here's another coincidence. Hmm. I'm just tired of people saying they're coincidences. Let's just call it truth, right? Handout number three. I went ahead and wrote up here. There was a Jew that lived from 1140 to 1217. His name was Rabbi Judah ben Samuel. And this is the middle of the Middle Ages, and he's reading his Bible, and he claims to have figured out the timing of when the Messiah would come. Do you know the Jews don't accept Jesus as their Messiah? So they still believe that their Messiah is coming. So they don't accept Jesus. So this guy, way back when, in like 1200, says, I think I figured it out. I think within 10 Jubilees, the Messiah is going to come. What does the Jubilee? Well, God uses the number seven, doesn't he? There's seven days in a week. And then God has what's called a Shemitah cycle that we'll look at here in a minute. Every seven years, God does something. And then God uses a Jubilee. Every seven times seven years, 49 years, in the 50th year, God says, that's a Jubilee. I'm going to do something. So this guy says the first Jubilee is 1517. And he says, after 10 Jubilees, then the Messiah is going to show up. Okay, well, 10 Jubilees from 1517, nah. <laughs> what date is that? So this is a Jewish rabbi who, reading his Bible, says, man, I think around 2017, something. If you were a Jew and you were reading this guy, and you were looking at the stars in Jerusalem, and you saw that date, don't you think you'd take notice? Do you think they did? How is it we, a bunch of saved people, see it, but they don't? Maybe we're the ones supposed to be telling them, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But just coincidence that this guy, th and you know what one of these dates is? 1917. You know what happened in 1917? The Balfour Declaration. You know what the Balfour Declaration is? It's an a, uh, Englishman, and the English got to take over that area. 
And they declared that we think the Jews could come back and, and live here. So this is all accident. Or God is directing history in such a way that he's showing you from above in the stars. I already knew that was going to happen. How could he write a book of prophecy? Because he already knows how it's going to end. And this is proof. <laughs> this is empirical. Is that the right word? Empirical proof in a court of law that has to stand up because this couldn't be an accident. How can some guy 500 years ago get it right? Coincidence. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep on going, though. But I just find that amazing. Here he is 300 years before. He said, about 300 years from now, start counting 10 jubilees, and then something's going to happen for Israel. Boom. <laughs> it did. What an accident, man. Uh, well, anyway, or maybe, maybe God spoke to the Jew. Maybe God was using him. I don't know. But right on schedule, not a coincidence. Now let's look at uh, handout number four. And this is called Shemitahs. And every seven years, there's what's called a Shemitah. And a lot of times in history, God will tell people in the Shemitah before what's going to happen in the Shemitah that comes after. So there's a guy named Bob Barber on YouTube. If you get a chance, watch his videos. And I think this is his chart here. I borrowed. I know he wouldn't have a problem with that. And uh, there's a saying that goes, World War I was to prepare the land for the Jews, and World War II was to prepare the Jews for the land. World War I led to the Belfort Declaration. World War II, many Jews died. And because of that, many of them as refugees went back to Israel. And they started a nation in 1948. So Bob Barber has looked at World War I and World War II, and he's looked at these Shemitah cycles. He shows that World War II was seven years long, 1939 to 1946. And so you're looking at every seven years and how God does something every seven years. And he says if you, if you go and, and you count 11 Shemitah cycles since the rebirth of Israel. So they were born in, in 1948, right? That's when they declared themselves a, a nation. It was 1947 when they went back. 48, they said, we're a nation. May 14th, was it? And then 49, they started their government. So you take the next Shemitah cycle and you count them. The 11th Shemitah cycle would work out perfectly for the tribulation. And what's 11 the number of? Judgment. Wouldn't that be amazing? But... Look what happens. 2017 would be right here, right? And this is where the sign came. So could the sign be saying now in this next one over here is when the tribulation starts? Because God always tells them before what's going to happen next. And there's a cycle of that happening with World War I. And then something good happens for the Jew. World War II, something happens good for the Jew. World War III, could that happen soon? And then God does something good for the Jew? like coming back and ruling over them. But first has to come the seven years of tribulation. So that's just another coincidence, right? Uh, according to some people. Now, the first book in the Bible is Genesis. The last book of the Bible is Revelation. The Bible's like a mirror, right? But the Bible's also like a circle. And so I'm thinking about this, and I'm trying to figure this out, and I'm like, what, what does the Bible tell us? Every story in the Bible is there for a reason. I don't think it's accident. And so I'm looking at this Revelation 12 sign, and I'm going, well, it happened in 2017. So why couldn't that have been a rapture? That would have been nice. What was it doing? Well, I think it was God saying, hey, you're going to get your capital back. But I think also it ties along with a story in the book of Genesis. You remember a guy named Joseph? What happened to Joseph? Well, he was sold by his old people. They sold Jesus, their Messiah. And he was there, and then he saved Israel. But first there were seven good years, then there were seven bad years. What if the seven good years are here? And that's what that sign was in 2017. And in September 23rd, 2017, God says, okay, that starts the seven good years, Israel. Then you're going to have seven bad years. What happened in the book of Genesis? Well, seven good years was everything was great and there was plenty for seven years. And then the last seven years, there was an economic collapse and everybody lost everything. They even came to Pharaoh and said, we'll give you our own souls if you'll just give us food. That sounds like a great time for the mark of the beast. Now, when Trump was president, do you all know what happened? 
We had the greatest economy in the history of the world and the history of America. Things were going up, up, up when he became president. And then they started going down, down, down from 2020. What happened in 2020? COVID. Rona. Old Rona came along and raised her ugly head. So it sounds like things are getting good. And it sounds like the devil's like, nope, 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 can't have that. <laughs> and he tried to stop it. But if you think the tribulation's a cakewalk, you're mistaken. It's going to be horrible. These last seven years are going to look like good years compared to what's coming in the tribulation. So could it be, and I'm just asking, I'm not saying, I'm asking, uh, could the Revelation 12 sign be a marker? Hey, Jews, do you remember that story in, in uh, Genesis of the seven good years? Well, get ready because these are seven good years and prepare for the next seven years because those are the seven bad years. Could that be what that is? If it is, well, then it starts falling in place, doesn't it? When would be the tribulation starting around 2023 or 2024? Which means we would be what? Very close to the rapture. And you know what? We're about to go to war, aren't we? So I don't see how the Lord could tarry. If the Revelation 12 sign is for the Jews, then I think that means the rapture is about to come very shortly. So that's the way I see it. I could be wrong. I don't mind saying I can be wrong. But I do think that God does things in the heavens. And I do think that that Revelation 12 thing was a big deal. Do you all remember September 23rd, 2017, and, and all the hype about this on the Internet and everything? And, and we were all like, oh, well, the rapture didn't come, and we kind of forgot about it. And we're like, oh, whatever, maybe it was nothing to it. No, it's something for the Jews. So if God's got to go back and deal with the Jews, what's He going to have to do? He's going to have to do something. So there's a lot more I could get into, but under Trump, our economy was better than ever. And then Rona, and then the lockdowns. Now, if the economy crashes, which is what they want, they want to call it the, the great, what do they call that, reset. They want that to happen. It would all line up with the seven good years, seven bad years. And it'd all be like, yeah, remember that story, Jews? Well, it, it's just, wow. You can't make this stuff up, can you? So, whew, isn't that amazing? Now, look at handout number five. There's also what's called the blood moons. Have you ever looked at the blood moons? There were blood moons in 2015, and there were blood moons throughout history. And it seems like every time there's a blood moon, what is a blood moon? When the moon appears as red, it seems like it has something to do with Israel. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Did you also know that 1492, 1493, the Jews were were told to leave Europe, and they were kicked out of Europe. And you know there was a red moon around that time. And what's weird is these red moons always just coincidentally happen on the feast days of the Jews. <laughs> what are the odds that it just happens to be on the feast for them when it could have just been any time? But no, it's, always, it's like God is saying, hey, are you watching? So you're telling me that's just another coincidence that God does this mathematical perfection? I think on the next handout, number six here, look at that, how there's equal distance numbers from, from each of the red moons. It's just, this is mathematically perfect. Only God could do something like that in heaven. So I'm looking at all this and I'm scratching my head. I'm going, wow, wow, this, this can't be some sort of an accident. This must be God telling the Jews, this is what I'm going to do with you. And if we're saved and we're looking at it, we can be like, well, that means we got to get out of here first because God's going back. So I'm just thinking, man, the rapture's got to come really soon. Um, there's some other neat stuff. Before the September 23rd, 2017 sign, there was an eclipse over all of America on August 21st, 2017. There's going to be another eclipse over America, April 8, 2024. And that eclipse goes over America and does an X. Is that God saying, you know, Hey, America, you're not back in the Jew, so you're done. I don't know. I just find that very amazing. And uh, by the way, did you know there was an eclipse over America in 1776? Maybe God's saying, King George, I'm done with you. I'm going to have some other people go out there and do something for me. <laughs> Could be. Now, let me read you something very interesting, just some more coincidences, if you will. Most total eclipses fall over water or unpopulated areas of the planet. So an eclipse is very rare in itself to see. The August 21st, 2017 eclipse, it starts in Oregon in the 33rd state 
and goes all the way across to the 33rd parallel in South Carolina, and it happened on the 233rd day of the year. I don't know why all the 33s. But just for fun, it was 99 years since the last eclipse to go coast to coast in the United States in the year 1918. That was the Balfour Declaration, but that's also the end of World War I. Just coincidences though, right? Or could it be God puts eclipses because it's marking a war is coming or it's marking something? I think our God is smart and powerful, and He does that. Now, I, 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 I'm just scraping the surface. I can't understand it all, okay? So I'm going to stick with the Bible. I'm not going to that instead. But I just want to give you how this can't be coincidence. The first big eclipse hit Oregon, and the eclipse was right over a town in Oregon called, are you ready for this? Salem. <laughs> Interesting, Jerusalem. That's where the name comes from. Salem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Um, Wow, that's interesting. The eclipse path was 70 miles wide. That eclipse, 70 miles, what does that remind you of? Daniel's 70th week, doesn't it? 70. Donald Trump was born during an eclipse. Did you know that? Did you know that Donald Trump was 70 years old, 70 months old, and 7 days old when he took office as president? But that's just a coincidence. Or maybe God used him like he used King Cyrus. For the Jews. Boy, I'm getting some big goosebumps here. Um, when this second eclipse comes, okay, the first eclipse was August 21st, 2017, and it went from left to right, and it goes across America. The next eclipse comes in 2024, and it goes the other way, and it makes a great big X. Do you know where the X is? The middle of the X is a town in Illinois called Little Egypt. <laughs> What does that remind us of? The Exodus, right? When they left Egypt. Maybe we're leaving this Egypt at the rapture. Huh? But, um, you know, just coincidence. And the exact point where these two eclipses uh, line up is in Cedar Lake, Illinois. And it's right on a road called Salem Road. <laughs> oh, wow. Just a coincidence. Um, the last time we had a full eclipse in America. Oh, oh, and by the way, it's right across from a town called Maconda. <laughs> which used to be called the Star of Egypt. What is Hollywood? Wakanda forever or something? I don't know. But this is Makanda. But in 1918, when there was the eclipse over America, guess what? It was preceded by a great pandemic. Millions died, and then they got in a war. That was the Spanish flu. There's going to be in 2024 that other eclipse, and preceded it was a what? Giant pandemic. <laughs> Okay, all right. Are you getting a hint that God is real and the Bible is true? I hope you're getting that. And God is showing from the stars what he's doing. So we've got the red moons. We've got all this stuff. Let's go over here to um, handout number six. And I just put up there, here's the red moons. They're called tetrads. And it took place in 1492, 93, 94. That's when the Jews were told to leave Europe. Uh, Arab-Israeli war. 1948, 49, 50. There just happened to be red moons. That's when they got their land back. 1967, you ever heard of the Six Days War? There was a red moon tetrad. And then here over in 2013, 14, 50, another red moon tetrad. How is that not God telling the Jews, hey, I did call you through Abraham years ago, and I do care about you as a nation, and I haven't forgotten you. And if you're just following the Bible and looking up at the stars like I told you, you'd see that I'm going to do something for you. How is that not God? Well, just an accident. That's what some people say. Just some cosmic accident. Just a coincidence. Do you think they teach this stuff in colleges? Secular colleges? If they did, there would be a true revival, wouldn't there? And not the Ashbury stuff that they claim to be a revival. So I look at the Bible and I go, man, it's true. God is real. God is real. Now, back to Revelation chapter 12. Well, we're going to go long today and that's fine. I just There's so much to get out. Revelation chapter 12 Verse 1 and 2, There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing birth, and pain to be delivered. Well, there you go. That's the Revelation 12 sign. And that happened on September 23rd, 2017. A sign in the heavens that only happens once every 7,000 years. And you're going to tell me there was nothing to it? I can't. 
I, I just can't wait to hear all the attacks I get online from people. He doesn't know what he's talking about. All you're doing is exposing you don't know what you're talking about because I'm just going to the Bible and I'm looking at how it all ties to the Jews and I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I don't believe in replacement theology. Amen. I'm glad I'm not one of these yahoos running around. God's done with the Jews. Boy, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? Now it says, verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. Oh, so this was one. Now this one's going to be what, later perhaps? Is that what it's saying? This is a separate thing. Turn over to Revelation 15 real quick and look at this. Revelation 15 and verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven. So a sign and a wonder is the same thing. Okay. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Is there a constellation that's made up of seven stars? Could it be he's talking about another sign he saw? There's one called the seven sisters and it's Pleiades. <laughs> so now that opens the book to you, man. I can't use Stellarium. I can't figure that thing out. But I tell you, God has marked in the stars everything he's going to do. And you know what we have? We have a great big question as to whether our calendar's right. Everybody says, we don't know if the calendar's right because some pope changed it 10 days. There's the Julian calendar. There's this. We don't know. Well, how, how about if God said, okay, the calendar's messed up, but just start from that day and you'll know everything's going to happen. Could that be why God did that? So we can say, forget the calendar. This is when God's going to go dealing with the Jews, going to give seven years of good years, then the seven years of the bad years, the final week. Could it be that? I don't know. But if it is, that's encouraging to me because that means the rapture's coming this year or next year. And I can't wait. <laughs> now, maybe I see it wrong. Remember, we're seeing through a glass darkly. But what I am seeing is God's doing that for the Jews. So it can't be much longer, right? It cannot be much longer. So Revelation chapter 12 Verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now let's go to handout number seven. Is there in heaven a constellation that looks like a dragon or a serpent? Well, you can't see it very well, but here's the woman. And that went through that Jupiter, and it came up and started going up. And if you look to the left there, do you see a snake or a serpent? It's like that went by that mouth of that serpent. <laughs> the man child rose up and went by the mouth of that. And look who's holding it. A guy. Michael. Who is that? O Ophiuchus or something? I forget his. But in the Bible, that's Michael. So as we're reading through the Revelation and we're trying to figure out what are these things, these dreams and visions this guy is seeing, and we say, well, it has to do with stars. Look at it. It's constellations. Maybe God 2,000 years ago was saying, oh, you really want to know the future? Okay, about the time when the stars are doing this, this is going to happen. Now it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? God gave us this book of prophecy, and he showed us in the stars when to be looking for when it takes place. That's so far-fetched, Brother Breaker. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm sure that's what they said in the day of Jesus when the wise men showed up and said, well, hey, where's the king of the Jews because we saw a star? Oh, you saw a star? That's so far fit. I mean, people will deny anything, won't they? So, there's this dragon or this serpent. So, somebody has zoomed in to this area on Google Sky, and they found a little black thing covering something up. <laughs> and then someone took a picture, and look, that's what is being covered up. For some reason, they don't want you to see what's covered up. What does that look like? That looks like the, the pig snout is what I'm thinking of, but it looks like a dragon's nose or something. And underneath that are a bunch of stars that, that, that make like a, a smiley face or something. So I'm not the smartest bird in the world, so I, I can't get this all together, but I know it has something to do with when the stars are in alignment at this time, this is going to take place. And I think we're there. I think we are very close to World War III, very close to the rapture of the church, very close to Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation period. And I think God is not done with the Jews. And He is going to go back to dealing with those people. And I think the Antichrist is going to be here shortly. So what is our blessed hope? Jesus is coming soon. So Revelation chapter 3, oh, excuse me, chapter 12, it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, we don't have time to get into this, but remember, in Revelation it talks about these seven kings and things like that. Maybe this ties into that. And uh, this is very interesting because you remember when uh, 
Jesus was here and he said to Peter about whatever you bind in heaven will be bound on earth and loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. I don't understand that, do you? But it sounds like things up there correspond with things down here. I don't know how. Now, if you're a mason, what do they say? As above, so below. Maybe the devil has given them an insight into some of this stuff. <laughs> I don't want what they got. I'd rather stick with the Bible. You know what I mean? But there's something to that. Have you ever studied the Great Pyramids of Giza? There's three of them. Have you ever study the Sphinx? If you look up at the night sky, the Sphinx lines up with Leo. Leo is a, what? A giant, um, I want to say lion. Yeah, lion. Well, do you know they say the Sphinx was probably a lion? And then they cut off the face and put a man's face on it because the shape of it looks just like a lion. And so those three pyramids line up with, was it Orion's belt or something like that? So what you're seeing is them building this thing down here that corresponds with what's up there. It's almost like something came down from up there and told people to worship them up there. Huh? Oh, fallen angels, right? And stars are angels in the Bible. Isn't it weird? I, don't... Whew, I never had goosebumps this big. Oh, man. The Bible is incredible, isn't it? So we look at this and we go, man, the Bible must be true. So verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So do stars actually fall? Are these angels, some more angels that fall with Satan? Could we see fallen angels again? What would that lead to? Nephilim again, wouldn't it? I don't know. And did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And what did we see? That up here, there's this serpent-looking thing. And the serpent-looking thing, well, the devil, it says he's a dragon and a serpent. And this Jupiter started to go up. So it almost looks like it went by, I should have done it in green. Well, so it was a red dragon, so I guess it, it almost looks like it's trying to devour what's going up. It's all lining up in the stars somehow. And then um, you continue there. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Well, there's caught up. That's a rapture. So could this be us identifying with Jesus? Because remember, the 144,000 are the first fruits. That takes us back to resurrection. Rapture, all those that died in Christ, resurrected. It all seems to be pointing back to here and back to Jesus. So does that mean that very, very, very soon the rapture is coming and we're caught up? Whoo -hoo, I hope so. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God. So the man child, which would be Jesus, well, we're body of Christ. So we got to go up be with his body. He's the head. We're the body. What if you have just the head and no body? <laughs> Well, then, the, then you got uh, uh, the head singing, I ain't got nobody, right? So you got to unite them. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God and they should feed her. So the woman is still down here. The woman doesn't go up. So who's the woman? Israel. And she gets to go through, we saw in the last time, last chapter, the first three and a half years and worship in her what? Temple. Who let her build the temple first? Cyrus. Who is making it where she can rebuild the temple? Trump. I wonder if Trump's going to get back in somehow. The last Trump? The rapture? <laughs> I'm just, whew, there's some sort of case before the Supreme Court right now where they're suing over the whole election thing. What if the Supreme Court says, yeah, yeah, we need, to, we need to fix that. I don't know. I don't know. But it would, wow, it's exciting. But I do believe that God used Trump for the Jews. And it just as he used, I forgot to write Cyrus, back, way back here. So I see God doing what God wants to do, and I see God as all-knowing, all-powerful, and Him putting in the stars way before things that are happening that are markers. And we're not done. I've got, you want to keep going? <laughs> I've got more. I've got more. This might go a little long. So here we are in verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God, and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So this has to be over here. So this chapter starts with a little bit before the rapture, but then continues going this way. So it's another one of the retellings that I was telling you about. And so there we go. Um, last three and a half years, the Jews flee. Now they probably go to a place called Petra. Have you ever heard of Petra in Jordan? And that ties into the flood. I better say this now so I don't forget later. Oh, and I better say this now too so I don't forget later. By the way, do you remember 
September 23rd, 2017. Do you remember what was happening on, in America, in the Atlantic? There were two hurricanes. One was called, was it Mary or Maria? And one was, oh, what a coincidence. What does that remind us of? A child named Jesus, a man child. Just coincidence, folks, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen the Naked Gun show? You know, the, 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 the crazy funny show, Naked Gun, where the police, the police guy is in front of a factory that's firework factory, and like a car goes in and blows up, and the fireworks factory is fireworks everywhere, and the police come out, nothing to see here, please disperse, and everyone's going, ah, oh, because it's a beautiful light. That's what I feel like, you know? It's like, nothing to see here, no, no, don't look, and it's like the whole Bible's right behind you, and it's opening up. You can't help but see this. God is, wow, that to me is just amazing. So the whole thing that I wanted to say about before I forget was the devil's trying to use a flood to destroy Israel, to destroy the Jews in this last three and a half years. There's a place called Petra in Jordan, which is a city that's in a great canyon. And I've never been there, but I've had friends that have gone. And a lot of Christians over the last 20, 30, 40 years have gone there and taken Bibles and hid them in the rocks. Because they believe that that's the only place that you can flee into the wilderness and be completely protected because you've got complete protection by rocks. And it's an ancient city built by the, I forget, Nebataeans or something. And there was not a lot of water in their day. So they literally carve into the side of the rocks little places to where it would collect water and it would go all downhill and go right into their bins so they would have water. So if you try to destroy somebody with water, all you're doing is directed it all through there, right into them, so they'll have some water to drink for three and a half years. So the devil's like, let's flood them to death. And they're like, boy, we're thirsty. Mm -hmm. And if that's where they go, and that's where a lot of Christians think they're going to go, is to that place called Petra, it's lots of caves in the rock. They'll have more water than they know what to do with, because you couldn't flood them. It's, it's self-made to collect water so it can't flood, and yet preserve for them to drink. Wow, isn't that amazing? So I think that's neat. So Revelation chapter 12 and uh, verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Thank God for that. And neither was their place found any more in heaven. What a great verse. The devil can't go into heaven ever again. From then on, he's bound to the earth. And then he's going to go down to hell, and then get out one more time. And then he, never again can the devil travel into outer space. Won't that be amazing? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That sounds like when? Like Jesus going to save the Jews, Jesus coming to Armageddon, going to rule for a thousand years. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Who, who loved not their lives unto death? Those who died with their heads cut off during the time of the tribulation uh, for not taking the mark of the beast. So lots of stuff here, lots of stuff here. Let's continue here. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens. <laughs> Who's in heaven? God and his angels. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When do you think this will be? Well, remember, the Antichrist for three and a half years is just a man. Then he's assassinated. Next week we look at that in chapter 13. Then the devil is incarnate for three and a half years inside of him. So do you see as you're reading each verse where it looks like it applies? That's what it looks like to me. And it says... Um, Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place. Now, I don't have times to get into that. Deuteronomy 32, verses 8 through 12. Actually, let's go there. There's actually in Jeremiah some places that as well that talk about the wings of an eagle. Uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles, the Bible says. So, um, some people in, in, uh, read this and they say, well, eagle, that's America. You know, America, our, our um, national bird is, is an eagle. Maybe we helped them. Well, at one time, we helped Israel. We were their ally. The guy that's in power now wants nothing to do with them, just like the guy back before him, Obama. 
Obama did not want to do anything with the Jews. So does Trump come back and help them? The eagle helps them, perhaps? Or is this just a figurative thing where God is like the eagle that takes care? I just thought this was interesting. When you study verses and you go back to verses, let's go to Deuteronomy 32, 8. And look what it says. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of Adam, He set the bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is His people. Jacob is the lot of His inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nests, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So maybe the eagle is Jesus who protects them to flee into the wilderness. So the Lord alone did lead him. And watch this. And there was no strange God with him. What an odd thing to say. Why? Because the Antichrist comes in. He says, I am God. And he sits on the throne of the temple. Well, they got away from that strange guy because he's not the true God. And they go, and the real God protects them. So I just love to read cross-references, don't you? Revelation chapter 12. Let's finish this up. Revelation chapter 12. I told you, man, you need to buckle your seatbelts for today's Bible study. And um, anybody get whiplash? Okay, good, good. Um, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time, times and a half a times from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And guess what? It doesn't happen. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, wroth means angry, wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, makes war with us who are saved. Because what does he do? He gets up his huge army, and he goes out to face Jesus Christ at the battle of Armageddon. And he's destroyed. And we win. I read the book. We win. Amen? Amen. Who wants to be on the side of the globalist? Not me, because they're a bunch of losers. Amen? So, all that stated, let's turn over to two more passages. Let's go to Genesis 49. Let me show you how this isn't just the book of Revelation revealing this. I think I see this back in Genesis. So, some of the stuff in Genesis is in the book of Revelation. Isn't that amazing? The Bible is a circle. It ends where it begins. Jesus is beginning and end. Genesis 49, look at verse 9. Actually, let's read verse 8. Judah, thou art he... Whom thy brethren shall praise. Why? Because Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Jesus came from Judah. Bow down before him. The Messiah comes from Judah. Judas is a lion's whelp. So Judah is like a lion. So Leo would represent Jesus, I guess. And it says, My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion, as in an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Scepter is what a king holds. So Jesus Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. He is the king of Israel. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. What? Between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Do you see that between his feet thing? Now you read through that, you're like, what's he talking about? But when you start thinking of the constellations, well, there's a constellation called Leo. Leo means lion. Something went through its feet. <laughs> Why? And that's a type of him. And he went through the feet of the woman. Till Shiloh come. What is Shiloh? Shiloh means peace. When are we going to see peace in the world? Well, Jesus came through the feet. Comes back at Armageddon. And there's peace on earth for a thousand years. Do you think that's just some cryptic thing? Or do you think the Holy Spirit went inside of this guy and had him write that down? So that we, way later, can look back and go, maybe that's what it's talking about. <laughs> maybe. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 24. So if this doesn't make you want to study your Bible, I don't know what does. Because I just got the tip of the iceberg. You know how much more of this kind of stuff is in the Bible? And we haven't figured it out yet? Do you think they talk about this at the Ashbury Revival? <laughs> Do you? Do you think the Jesus Revolution talks about this stuff? I mean, um, why aren't people reading their Bibles and studying? This is fun, right? Why don't people want to study the Bible? You, you talk to most people, man, I'll see you in church on Sunday. Oh, what's, I'm bored and I fall asleep when I go there. I'm like, what church are you going to? Well, you better come with us because this is fun. Uh, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17 through 19. This is a prophet called Balaam. 
Balaam was a prophet who was a true prophet of God, but he compromised and he did something he shouldn't. But this is a prophecy that, that he spoke. So even though some people want to call him a false prophet, it doesn't say in the Bible that Balaam was a false prophet. He was just not a very good one because he wasn't very obedient to the Lord. He was trying to get money out of it. You know, like some preachers today, they just preach in the pulpit for money. Um, yeah, that's why they don't talk about stuff like this. <laughs> but anyway, um, he says here these words. So the Holy Spirit was in him saying these words. Look at this. Numbers 24, 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. Hmm. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Who could that be? Jesus Christ. He's a star. The real superstar. Matter of fact, he's called the bright and morning star. And a matter of fact, a star came and marked the birth of Jesus, the Bethlehem star. Do you know what they say about the Bethlehem star? It shows up every 2,000 years. Do you know the Bethlehem star showed up around the time of Abraham? <laughs> Abraham was the one that God called. Do you think maybe God knew that he was going to call Abraham? And so he sent a star in heaven. I wonder if any wise men showed up and said, hey, where's this guy named Abraham? He's going to be the father, just like when Jesus did. Every 2,000 years, do you know this star was in the heaven when Adam was there? So that, to me, is just, wow, how do you make this stuff up? Two years before September 23rd, that star showed up again. Two years before, just like it showed up two years before Jesus was born. Do you think Christianity is some lame religion, a bunch of fanatics and a cult? Or do you believe this is absolute truth and that God in heaven is showing who he is, where he is, and how he knows exactly what's going to happen before it takes place? How anyone could say, I'm not a Christian, I don't want to be, that's crazy. They're denying reality. They're denying fact. They're denying the stars in heaven. Wow. So, Revelation 22, 16 is where Jesus says he is the bright and morning star. Is God using the stars in heaven as markers of historical events? If so, all I can say is, wow. <laughs> I'm in awe and in wonder of God. How can anyone deny or reject Jesus? What a powerful and all-knowing God we have and serve. And I know we went a little long, but maybe someone has something to add to this or has some questions. Go ahead, sister. What's up? Have you noticed in the western sky tonight, you know, Venus is burnt. Now there is one under it. Yeah. That wasn't there before. Right. And, that, and I don't, that? yeah, I don't know what that means, but I, I gone out at night and I see that same thing. And I know it's. I look up in the sky and there's Venus and then there's something right below it. And I know it. And I thought I saw one day something like that right below it. I went, but I don't know. I, I, I remember seeing hurt. three, but you don't see this one now. But connect the dots. What? I wonder if there was one here and here. You know, I don't know. But, but there's something going on out there. And. I would caution you to get too much into it. Some people get too into this, and I don't want to do that because it's more for the Jews. I want to stick with preaching the Bible, not preaching the stars. But I do want you to see them. But yeah, I've noticed that. I know it makes us feel like something's coming, but it also, isn't it reassuring to know that our God's behind it all, and He's a God of love, and He's going to get us out of here? It's not impending doom that I feel. <laughs> it's utter joy knowing He's coming for me, right? So I'm glad I don't believe I have to go through the tribulation. Otherwise, where's my joy? <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. There's the star again. Oh, another war. No, it's, yeah, we're getting out of here. Amen. I say amen, amen. Anybody else? Yeah, flip your board. Flip the board, okay. All right. When Adam, Abraham, Jesus was born, there was a star. Right. All right, you got another star there. Right. Who was born? 2015. In 2015, I don't know. Who was born in 2015? I don't know. Huh. But, but so it was within two years they showed up, the, the wise men. So it sounded like it took them two years to get to, to Jesus. So I think it was two years before marking this, which was a birth of the star, which was the star supposed to be like a man child going up. So maybe that's what it was. But it's interesting there was a two-year marker. 
before that showed up. And so if that shows up and God's saying, hey, seven years from now, then this happens, wouldn't that be great? Now, let me say it, disclaimer, I'm not giving the date of the rapture. I'm not saying September 23rd, uh, what, 2023. I did not say that, but some people. But I am saying it looks like it's got to be soon. And what a great thing if it happened on one of the feast days. Because that would be just another reason for Israel to go, oh, how'd we miss it, right? Another sign for them. As we finish here, he's going to pass those out. But we still had another question. Now, I have a question. Just, you didn't pick out the song this morning, did you? No, what was the song this morning? You didn't even pay attention, did you? How Great Thou Art? Yeah. Oh, we sang How Great Thou Art. Okay. Wow. Wow. What, what verse was that? The first verse of How Great Thou Art. Well, Elvis loved that song too, or did he? It says, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, we're talking about a wonder, Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. The worlds, the other worlds, I guess you could say planets. I see the stars and hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Yeah, wow. And that was just an accident that we sang that. But that's even more goosebumps, huh? Because that goes along with maybe somebody knew who wrote that song, what we know. I remember an old guy, um, there's an old story of a guy who was back in the 1700s, 1800s, and he was a plantation owner or something, and he was in a, a uh, I want to say chariot, but that's not right. He was in a, a wagon being led home at night, and the driver said, there's a meteor shower, look at all those. He said, it's the end of the world, because all these meteors were falling, and they woke him up. He says, what is it? He said, it's the end of the world, look at the meteor shower, and he goes, not the end of the world, look, that one up there, when he comes. That's when it's over. So watch that one until we get home and, and wake me if that one falls. So which one was he talking about? The bright and morning star, Jesus Christ. So people did know this stuff. It's just how ignorant we are nowadays. You go to most churches, they don't even know the gospel. And it's just so sad to see the, the, the great ignorance. Imagine how ignorant we are from our forefathers or from the time of Jesus when those wise men knew all this stuff. Remember Daniel? He was super wise. He knew all the stuff. I wish we could just pick their brain for a couple of hours, don't you, of what they knew. Um, but I still caution you, don't get too much into the star thing. But do know that God is there and He shows who He is and what He does. All right, anybody else questions or something to say? Well, yes? Real quick thing. Yeah. Sure. The significance of the uh, eclipses, for they intersect. It's right on top of the new map of the earth. Well. Okay, yeah. So when these two, uh, the two eclipses over America, uh, it, and I had that in my notes, they go right over what's called the New Madrid uh, Fault. And people have been saying for years that that's going to divide America when a great earthquake takes place. What did we read in the Bible about? Several times they mentioned an earthquake. So what if that happened at that eclipse? It just so happened there was an earthquake. So wouldn't that be interesting? Um, but all I know is we usually don't see it as it happens, but sometimes we look back and we see it, don't we? We see a lot of things looking back. Hindsight's better than foresight. But if we could figure all this out, we could see it all before it comes. Wouldn't it be nice if I could get up here each week? Well, Kansas City's going to lose the next year, and uh, I guess who's going to win is so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, this is going to happen. I mean, people be like, how'd you know? It's, well, you know. And, you know, we haven't even gotten into the King James Bible Code or the, the Hebrew codes and things like that. You know those in the Bible? The Old Testament in Hebrew, the first five books of the Bible, I forget. You, you count every, what, fifth letter? And it spells out Lord in Hebrew? That's not an accident. Some guy didn't sit down and write all that. And they go, now I better go back, make sure it counts out. God wrote it. And there's codes in the Bible. They take the um, Hebrew text, they put it in the computer, and then it's like a crossword puzzle. What words show up? And words show up. And, and it's events that are happening. It's like the whole book is, is like a cryptic code of truth. And however you look at it, you can't help but see intelligent design. God did that because his fingerprints are all over it. The book is alive. The book is alive. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Amen. That's a good one. Hebrews 4, 12. Look what the Bible says about itself. For the word of God is quick. Quick means alive. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now look at verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. <laughs> when you read the Bible, it's reading you. Because the Bible's alive. It's like its eyes looking at you. 
And you read the Bible, you're like, how did it, how did it know that I'm that? <laughs> because the Bible knows everything. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him of whom we have to do. Who do we have to do? Jesus, the Word. And this is his Word. So Amen. it's just incredible. It's just incredible. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, we can cut it off here, I guess.